Okay, problem number 16. Uh, air is compressed by an adiabatic compressor from 100 kPa to 12 degrees C and 12 degrees C to a pressure of 800 kPa to steady rate, mass flow rate, right, 0.2 kilograms per second. The isentropic efficiency of the compressor is 80% determine the exit temperature and the required power input. Okay. So, uh, th this one, it tells us the isentropic efficiency is 80%, okay, but I still kind of like to do these problems the same way, kind of the same direction. So, so what's happening at state 1? Uh, the pressure is 100 kPa, temperature is 12 degrees C, um, alright, to uh, state 2 to actual versus 2 isentropic, 2 actual, pressure 2 is 800 kPa. And, and it is still, remember we talked about last problem, it is still, we're going to assume it always goes to that 800 kPa. But I don't know the T2 actual. Uh, I don't know the T2 isentropic. It didn't tell us anything, either of those. Okay. Uh, but for state 1, uh, and now this is air. All right, this is air, not steam or anything like that. Uh, table A, 17. All right, that temperature. Uh, we could get the H1 is 285, let's see, 285.14 kilojoules per kilogram. Okay. Um, all right, so what do we do next? What do we do next? Well... This is air, right? We just got through with section 9, which told us all about ideal gases. And it told us uh, for isentropic ideal gases, one of the um, methods, uh, one of the processes we can use to solve some problems is using relative pressure or relative volume. Remember that? Remember that? We take the T1, we go to PR... Uh, one from the table, if we know the ratio of the pressure, we go to PR2, and so we could go to T2, right? This is only for isentropic, so that would give us the T2S, okay? And maybe that will help, help us out, right? Maybe that will help us out, because uh, once we know the T2S, uh, then maybe we can find the H. 2s, that's what we're going to do. And then once we find the H2s and the H1, because we already know it's at 80%, we can use 80% to find the H2 actual. Do you see? That's our roadmap. That's where we're going. Okay, but we might, you might not have seen that, but you do know that for ideal gases, th this you know process is a process we use for isentropic ideal gases. And state 2S, from 1 to 2S, is an isentropic ideal gas problem. Okay, so uh, if our T1 is 12 degrees C, uh, I can go to table A17, and I can get PR1. Maybe I should have done that while I was up here at table A17. Relative pressure, 1.1584. 1 uh, it's unitless. Um, all right, there. Uh so this is 1.1584, uh, and I know that PR1 over PR2 equals P1 over P2, right? The actual pressure ratio is the same as the relative pressure ratio, and I do know, yeah, look at that. I do know there it's 100 to 800. Let me write that over here. Uh, 100 to 800 would be 1.1584 to P. R2. I get PR2 9.2672. That, that makes sense, right? We're going 100 to 800. Our relative pressure is going from 1.1584 um, to let's see, green to 9.2672. And so from that table A17, probably have to interpolate because it's probably not exactly on one temperature. Uh, but interpolate between the two temperatures and interpolate between the two H's. All right, so T2S, I actually don't have T2S uh, because 
I'm, while, while I'm at there at that table, between the two values, let's go ahead and interpolate between the two H's. Let's go to the property table just to see. All right, air, what if we have a relative pressure of 9.2672? So let's go to property tables, A17. Let's see, about right here, yeah. A17 for air. Um, we're looking at, all right, so here's another thing. That is not entropy, right? That is that um, entropy function. Uh, um, don't know if it has a name. Uh, that is not entropy, so don't, don't try to be reading off the S not um, private tables. But anyway, we've got a PR of 9.26. There we go. Yeah, a PR of, it falls in between these two values. The temperature would be between 510 and 520. Uh, but while we're here, the H will be between 513.32 and 523.62, right? I like to do top 9.684 minus 9.031 equals 9.2672, 9.031 equals and just make sure 523.63 minus 513.32 I, I kind of do this upside down as what you probably would do uh, so here's just a reminder on interpolation uh, just make sure that make sure you are consistent right this value goes with that H this value goes with that H, and the one that I'm looking for, yeah, that value is what I'm looking for. All right, and make sure make sure it makes sense. I've got an H of 517.05 kilojoules per kilogram. Let's go back to our notes. I've got an H of 517.05 kilojoules per kilogram. And remember, that's H2S. This whole process is only for isentropic ideal gases. So that was the H if it was isentropic. All right, so H2S 517.05 kilojoules per kilogram. Now, I know that the um, efficiency, the isentropic efficiency of what was this? A compressor. Air is compressed. So the isentropic efficiency of a compressor, I've got this on my formula sheet, H2S minus H1 over H2 actual minus H1. And I know this, I know this, I know this, I know this. I can find H2 actual, right? I know this is 0.8 equals 517.05 minus 285.14 all over H2 actual 285.14. H2 actual is 575.03. We're almost there. It didn't actually ask for H2 actual. It asked for T2 actual. It, it's asking for the actual temperature, right? T2 actual. Now that I know H2 actual, I can go to table A17 and get the temperature, probably interpolating again. Probably interpolating again. This H, where, where does that fall on our property table? Let's go to our property tables. Uh, here's H. If I've got an H of 575, ooh, so close, but I would, I would need to interpolate between those. This one might be close enough that you could just say the temperature is 570. But I have a temperature of 569.5. T2 actual, 569.5. I think that was Kelvin. Okay, that was just A. That was just A, but B's not too bad. Let's find the required power input. Uh, this is actual, right? If it doesn't say, generally, right, it's talking about the actual power input. It, it doesn't say, uh, what is the lowest possible, best case scenario, the power input to the compressor, or, you know, it's not asking for the isentropic 
power input. It's asking for the actual power input. That's in our conservation of energy. Conservation of energy, uh, the work actual equals m dot actual h2 actual minus h1. Right? Be consistent if we're looking at the actual conservation energy equation or the isentropic conservation energy equation. So the power that we're looking for, m dot, it told us 0.2 kilograms per second is the actual mass flow rate, uh, 575.03 minus 285.14. Uh, I would get a w dot, 58 kilowatts. W dot, 58 kilowatts. Let's take a breath. Look back at what we did. We knew this was air. And so we knew that this is one of the ways that we can uh, calculate, we can use for isentropic processes for air. So, so from 1 to 2s, that is an isentropic ideal gas you know, process. So if it's an isentropic ideal gas process, we can use this, these relative pressures to get use the ratio of pressures is equal to the ratio of the relative pressures to get H2S and, and T2S. And then once we've got that, since we knew the efficiency, use that for H2 actual, and then use H2 actual, H1, and M dot to get the work for that problem. All right.